Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for giving us another opportunity to come around his presence, to worship him, to adore him, and bring our supplications unto him. Um, before we go to this morning, uh, for this morning meditation, shall we all turn to our well-known portion, the Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42, and uh, I will read verses 1 to 12. Job chapter 42, verses 1 to 12. Please follow. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Verse 4, here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so, that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliaphaz and Temanite, Eliaphaz the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for he have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly. In that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliaphaz the Temanite and Belidah the Shuite and so far the Namathai went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. Verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren, all his sisters, and all they that had been in acquaintance before and did eat bread with them in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one a earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she axes. Shall we pray? Our gracious, loving, heavenly father, we thank and we praise the Lord for giving us another privilege. Lord, to come around thy throne, to worship thee, to adore thee, to glorify thee, O oh, Father Lord, and bring our supplications unto thee. Yes, Lord, we thank thee for enabling us, O oh, Father, all these past nine months, Lord, to be faithful unto thee, O oh, Father Lord. We thank thee for being merciful unto us as we enter into this new month. Lord, we thank thee for bringing us together, Lord, as a church, as a family, as the children of God, oh, Father, Lord, blood-bought children, oh, Father, Lord, bring our supplications. And, Lord, and that, that our prayer may be accepted, Father, our needs may be um, answered. We may be healed, oh, Father, Lord. We thank thee and we praise you. We're going to, Lord, we pray thou may bless this time. Speak to us. Enlighten us from thy throne. Father, thou knowest I'm a dust. There's nothing good in me. I'm unworthy to, to bring thy word, oh, Father, Lord. Yet thou hast given this great privilege to me, oh, Father, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to us. And Lord, help us to, uh, to bring all our supplication, the manner it is, gets accepted unto thee, the way that you wanted us, Lord. And once again, we give thee all glory and honor and offer this humble worship and humble prayer in the exalted name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So Job, when we look into Job's chapters, all well-known chapter, even a little, if he has a Sunday school children, they will, can tell us the whole story of Job. Um, Job, it's one peculiar character in the Bible. We could uh, segment Job's life into three different parts. We could say pre-suffering, uh, during suffering, and the post-suffering. But here, when you come to verse four and uh, verse uh, Psalms chapter, uh, sorry, uh, Job chapter four, forty-two, verse five, it says, "I have heard of thee by hearing of the ear." But now my eye see it deep. This verse is, um, this is one of my favorite verses. Um, and I have heard this many times when I listen to uh, Tenegrin's music. Sometimes 
he starts this uh, his songs with this word. So this word always touched me. It always uh, um, made me to pay attention to this word. It says here, uh, verse five, I have heard of thee by hearing of the year. So here Job is giving two type of different uh, uh, things here. One, he says, I have heard of thee. He's here most of time in life that we all, we, we all know that we believe in Lord Jesus Christ, children of God, born again by his, by, by his precious blood. We, we, the same feeling that we have, yes, Lord, we have heard of thee. But here, Job has a, two, a complete a different experience. First, he says, all these years that I know that there is a God who exists, there is a powerful God that I serve. But then the second part, now he's saying, not only I heard of thee, but now I see thee. You have been revealed unto this useless dust that thou hast created. What a great privilege it is. Can we say today, yes, Lord, all these years I have heard of thee, but today I have seen thee. You have revealed yourself unto thee. Job had that experience. Job was able to say after his post sufferings, after what all he went through in his life, he was deaf. He was God himself revealed unto him. If you go, if you, let's go to the little background of Job. Let's go to Job chapter one. And if you read verse six, it says, now there was a day when sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. And verse 8, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my son, my servant, Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God, escheweth evil. Here, God, is, uh, God himself is being manifested through Job's life. So here we see God is glorified through the life of Job. So here he actually he is challenging Satan, and he is being glorified before the Satan, how Job's life has, has made the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to testify that there is no man like Job on earth. If you see clearly, carefully in verse 8, it says that there is none like him in earth, a perfect and an upright man and one that feareth God as she with evil. If we feel, if we know, if we have a life of Job, if we are living a life of a perfect and upright life, automatically the, the fear of God uh, has to be in us. If there is no fear of God in our hearts or in our soul, we cannot be as Job, as a perfect and an upright person. God's work cannot be manifested in our life. So here, if the fear of God is in our life, if the fear of God rests in our soul, yes, we will achieve evil. We cannot say, yes, I do live a perfect and upright life, and I fear God. And if, this, the, if the evil is still lingering in us, there is no uprightness in us. So Job, even though he was just heard of this great God, he, the, the, the prince, the, 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 the commandments that he followed, that he has to fear God and he has to live an upright life. God himself was manifested in his life. If he, that's why when you see in verse 12, Satan is challenging God himself. He's saying, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself put forth thine hand, so uh, put forth thy hand. Here, um, if you go back, uh, sorry, verse, um, verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, that Job feared God for nothing. Here, Satan is asking, you think, you, wh why Job is fearing God? Because everything is provided to him. He said, you have provided everything to him. Verse 10, as thou made an edge around about him and about his house, about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hand and his substances is increased in the land. So Satan is criticizing God here. So you have provided everything to Job. So no wonder he is worshiping you. Touch him and see if he still fears thee. Touch him, he will curse thee. But you got to see here how God is so confident, how he knows his servant Job 
will still be an upright person. How Job will still worship him. How Job will manifest, manifest the king of kings in his life. So God allows Satan and he to go test Job. He says, yes, go try him. When you try him, you will know that he's still faithful and he still will worship the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's what we see in verse 13 onward that we see what happens to Job's families. It has been taken away. Job is not only being tried physically, uh, emotionally, his substance was taken away and he was also tried physically. That's what we see in also in Job chapter 2, verse 3 and onwards. We read about how Job was uh, in verse 3. And the Lord said unto Satan again, As thou consider my son, that uh, my servant Job, that there is none like him on earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and achieveth evil. So the second time God is asking Job, Satan that. Now God is Satan is telling, touch his skin, sin, skin for skin. Yeah, all that man had. Will he give for his life? So God, now he has been touched physically. But God is warning Satan. But put forth, by, but put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and flesh, and he will. And that is, and then and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So now, Job has been physically touched. He was physically tried. All his substances, everything was taken away. It's, 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 it's whatever that belongs to him, what he could say that God gave him, and it was all taken away. Now his body was taken, his, his, his body was touched. Job was ready to, he was facing his death. He was ready to die, but he did not shy away from worshiping God. He did not shy away for, uh, uh, by ignoring God. That's what even when we see about his friends in chapter 4, we read his friends who came to support him, who console him. They started accusing Job of his actions. If you see in Job chapter 4 verse 8, it says, Even as I've seen, they that plow iniquity, so wickedness, reap the same. Here Job is accused of his, of his, of his condition. Job was accused. Because uh, here is his friend, is, uh, um, Eliaphas is saying, maybe you have sinned against God. God allowed certain things in your life because you, are, you sinned against what you plow. You plowed iniquity. You sowed wickedness. So God is judging you. This is how it happens in many of our Christian life. We always quick to judge. We think, oh God, certain times where God has provided every blessings in our earth, uh, on earth on, uh, for us. And the minute... Certain things have been taken away. We turn around and say, God, I gave everything and came for you. But now, the minute I came for you, everything has been taken away. This is Job did not, did not uh, even imagine. He did not even uh, uh, say that, Lord, that, that everything was robbed away from him because he served God. Because his friends were telling him, you have sinned. That's why God is punishing you. Many times, God allows certain things in our life for his name to be glorified, for him to be manifested in us. We see in Job, in same chapter, Job chapter, uh, chapter 23 and verse 10. Job is confident. He says, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. God was refining Job. When certain things happen in our life, certain situations that God takes us through us in, in this life, God is refining us. He wants us to be turned into gold. That secret Job understood, which his is, which is friends did not see, which his families did not see. But Job understood that God is taking him through a refining process. When the refining process is done, he will be, he will be presented. He will come forth as gold. So we see in John's gospel, chapter 9, verse 1, God, John's gospel, chapter 9, and verse 1 to 3. John's gospel, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Chapter 9, verse 1 to 3. We read about a similar thing that happens to a sick man, a blind man, 
and verse now one it says as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth and a disciple asked him saying master who did sin this who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind this is the assumption that we always have when a, when someone goes through certain kind of uh, 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 kind of situation in their life circumstances in the life this is the this is this this is what comes out of us we being mortal that's uh, that's our uh, human nature that we have sinned against god this was similarly the same condition what job's friends were doing they they were actually came to console him they put sackcloth they cried with him but at that at certain point they turned against him so similarly here the disciples also was questioning jesus why this man was blind why certain things god allowed in certain people's in life so that's why god answered neither has this man sin nor his parents verse 3 but the works of god should be made manifest in him when the god when the works of god gets manifested in a person's life in a in his children's life in his in his servant's life he turns us into gold that's why we see in job chapter 42 verse 5 it says after that i have heard of thee but now i see thee so what a great privilege it is for job that who he heard of someone that who exists but now he has been revealed god himself revealed unto job because of his uprightness in his life because of his steadfastness in his life because of his fear of god in his life because he achieved evil even when he went uttermost part of darkness in his life even though even unto his his, his body was touched even he was ready to 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 return to dust but job stayed upright job stayed faithful job feared god and job achieved evil That's why we read in Job chapter forty-two, verse eight. It says, "Here God is speaking to Job's friends. Here it says, 'Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks, seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer for yourself a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you.' When that refinement takes place in our life, this is the when and the the first thing that happens is God Himself reveals Himself to us. secondly now he says he when he says here to his friends go to job i will offer I, your burnt offering i will be it will be i will accept it from job god has will accept a prayer from an upright person god will accept prayer from a person who endures unto her end god will accept prayer who fears god god will accept the prayer from a person who eschews evil this is what job's life job though he went through so much troubles and situations in his life he stayed on course he stayed steadfastly for the lord he wor- he worshiped lord throughout his sufferings now god himself came down and revealed unto job and now god is saying job will pray for you for the friends and he will hear that prayer so here he says for him will i accept what a great privilege job has given you know, god has given unto job that the prayer of job will be heard so god is also offering us the same thing that he will hear our prayer also when we pray for our friends he said when you pray for your friends when you pray for your church i will hear your prayer when we train when we be when we stand fast in the word of god when we stand fast in the uh, in the in the fear of god when we when we when we when our life is upright before the lord when we achieve evil god will hear and accept our prayer verse 9 he says so eliphaz the temanite and beldadad the shuite and the zophar the namathite went and did according as the lord commanded them and the lord also accepted job first he was revealed unto job second god accepted job's prayer number 3 number 3 if you see in verse 10 job chapter 4 verse 10 it says and the lord turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends also the lord gave job twice as much as he had before so now we see the post suffering of job not only job god accepted job 
Now, Job, God has turned the captivity of Job. When we pray for our friends, when we pray for others' needs, when we come in oneness of mind and when we fight with the Lord for others, our captivity will be turned. Our, uh, um, our um, so sufferings will be turned and we will be uh, healed. That's what we read in, jo um, in uh, James chapter 5, verse 16. If it's done with me, to James 5, 16. James 5, 16 it says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Here the, God is, here the Lord is saying, be, uh, before we come to pray and pray, before we bring our supplication for others, he wants us to confess ourselves, confess our sins, to make sure, Lord, there is nothing in me that is, that, that, the, that there's, there's nothing evil that's lingering in me. Lord, that is taking away my uprightness, that's, that's taking me away from the fear of God. Lord, I confess, cleanse me, wash me. And then God is saying, then pray for you one another and you will be healed. Your, your captivity will be there turned. Your, your burdens will be taken away. Your sicknesses will be healed. We see in John, in also <coughs> John's gospel in chapter 9, verse 31. I think so. 31. Yeah, John's Gospel 31. Yeah. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be worshipper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So now we see we uh, in James chapter 5, verse 16, we saw confess our sins. So this is why God is saying, God, if our prayer has to be heard, if, uh, if there needs to be a power in our prayer, when there is, needs to be a healing in our prayer, when there needs to be a de deliverance in our prayer, when we need a sh shackles to be breaking in our prayer, first thing God is asking us to say, to do, now we know that God heareth not sinners. If that sin is lingering in us, our prayer will become vain. That's why God is saying in James chapter 5, verse 16, confess and then pray for one another in God. And then God is saying, once we confess and once we, once we worship the Lord, once we confess our sin and when we bring our prayer unto him, then the healing comes to us. Then the God accepts our prayer. That's what we read in Job chapter 42, verse 10 onwards we read, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much he had before. No matter what Job went through in his life, he has lost in a, everything. He may have lost everything. He lost his family, lost his belonging. He was lost his, uh, uh, his uh, almost he lost his life. His friends, everybody left him. But Job did not leave the Lord. In verse 12, that's what he says. So the Lord blessed the later end of Job. More than than his beginning, for he had fourteen thousand sheep, six thousand camels, and thousand uh, yoke of oxen, and thousand she axes. And we see also we read this morning also that was in Daniel chapter nine verse four. If you go to Daniel chapter nine verse four, as John and I brought this morning, it was reminded again to us. Daniel chapter four verse nine. So chapter nine verse four it says. And I prayed unto the Lord and my God and made my confession. The Lord wants us to confess. And then he said, and the Lord, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him. That love him means that, that who fears him. And to them that keep his commandment, that, that the, the one that keeps his commandment walks upright before the Lord and is with evil. Then our prayer will be heard. So let the Lord help us. Let the, let the Lord remind us the life of Job, what life has in, what Job has endured unto the end. No matter what happened to his life, he served the Lord, he worshipped the Lord, and he achieved evil, and he feared God. If these things are in our life, then our prayer will be a prayer of healing. 
our prayer will be prayer of a prayer of redemption and our prayer will heal us and will turn our captivity may the lord speak to us and help us that we may confess ourselves if anything that is lingering that's becoming a hindrance for our prayer to be heard may the lord remove that hindrance from us may the lord be revealed unto us so may the lord be glorified and manifested in our life that we may worship him and then we may bring our supplication unto the lord thank you